noted the strong performance in our, our first week. We're sick of having buys introducing us to the season as we did in 2015 and 2016. Thursday night, 7 p.m., ESPN Radio New Orleans. Our home season, conference opener, all at once. We'll have the pregame show at 6.30. And one of our favorite aspects of last year's Coach Rebo show was Coach Rebo's decision to create a segment for the legacy members of the Colonel family. Shane Cleaver played at Nichols from 2001 to 2004. He has been a prevalent part of this team's rise over the last couple years. Shane, thanks for hanging out with us on the Tim Rebo Show. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right, now if we go back and, and look at your story and, and where it originated from, you redshirted your freshman season, which prevented you from being a part of the conference championship team in 05, but it would be easy to start with your story in that capacity when, in a lot of ways, that still has fueled your hunger and being a part of this program. That's right. Um, when I came in in 2001, um, you know, coach at the end of camp, you get together with coach and uh, coach decides whether you're going to red shirt or whether you're going to play. And uh, being one of a, a large group of players that came in that year, I was really excited to get going and couldn't wait to uh, get on the field and, and start playing. Uh, guys want to come in, compete, and they want to start playing right away. And that was my MO. And coach gave me the, uh, the go and said, look, you're going to play as a true freshman this year. And uh, I was really excited about it. Fast forward to 2005, um, a bunch of the guys that I came in with, they were still on that team and playing for a conference championship. So it's kind of <laughs> kind of hard to go back and say, man, you know, I wish I would have uh, took the red shirt and been there for the 05 championship team. But, uh, you know, the, the guys, I think, will agree that uh, myself and a few others kind of laid the foundation for what we had in 2005. Man, that foundation has been so strong. Uh, I've had a chance to get to know a lot of those guys from the 05 team because they're everywhere. And, and to still see so many members of that Nichols family be a part of the 2016 team last year, now into 2017, where do you see that impact of a lot of the alums that, that are still around and, and still want to let people know, hey, we we had that same blood, sweat, and tears on the field that you did. We can relate. Well, I think it was, uh, first of all, it was a tight group of guys. Uh, i put it to you like this. Yesterday we did our uh, fantasy draft. It's our third year NSU fantasy draft. It's all guys from that 01, 05 era, and everybody's still uh, close-knit. We have uh, the catastrophe, which is going on in Houston right now. I think six of the guys that we play with on our fantasy team yeah. are all from that area. So, you know, we all kind of keep up. Hey, how you doing? Do you need anything? I, uh, I text back and forth with Josh Sun this morning. I talk with Yale Vinoy. We've got uh, Joe Fontenot Amity. Uh, Jake Housen, that's right in the middle of Houston. So, and, and everybody's doing well, but everybody's kind of checking on each other. And that just kind of goes to show you just a tight-knit group that we have and that we had with each other when we came in, and that's what it takes. And I think when you go out there now and you see what Coach Rebo has established, you see that same tight-knit group that you saw back in that period of time. You know, it's a, it's a very similar uh, feeling when you get out there now uh, in 2017. It's similar to what we had in 2005 yeah. and the years prior to that. Uh, it's just a tight group. Uh, everybody's kind of got each other's back, and, uh, you know, there's nothing that we wouldn't do for each other. Shane Cleaver hanging out with us. He was a part of the 2001 to 2004 Colonel team. Also... Underrated in your ability to wear that media cap preview games. I was telling you off the air, I love your Thursday night preview for McNeese and Nichols. How much time have you spent researching this game, Shane? Well, I, it, people that know me, they know I'm a, I'm a big NSU colonel. And, uh, you know, I follow NSU like most people follow LSU. And uh, you know, talk to my family about it. My uh, father-in-law is a huge LSU fan, and I've kind of got him on board with Nichols. You know, he's, his daughter was dance team captain at Nichols. Got a son-in-law that was a, a player for Nichols State. So I, I pride myself in NSU, and anytime we're going into a game, I like to go and research, you know, who the top players are and see what I can find out. And, I mean, it, the information was at my fingertips. I saw a, a former running back, trans, uh, you know, they went ahead and made him a tight end. I said, well, wow, this guy's yeah, a pretty Ross. doggone good running back. Now we got a, we got some speed, you know, coming over the middle. So we got to hit him. You know, we got a quarterback coming in, all-state guy out of high school, went to uh, Arkansas State for McNeese and went ahead and transferred back in. But we know this guy's got some talent. You know, he's got some receivers to throw to. They have uh, 
couple guys that on defense coming off of the edge that we have to make sure they don't get to that edge and get chased some time to, to do some damage, you know, downfield for us. Coach Rebo, how many unpaid consultants do you have around you? <laughs> I tell you what, he's fantastic, man. He he supports and uh, he has all the former players and that that Facebook that he has when we need to get a word out and get the guys in. He's there, he's supporting, and he's everywhere. And, look, we need more, many more like like Shane because he does a tremendous job for us. And then um, he, he comes in on Sundays and gives us the scout report so we, we, we can get ready to go for the week. Coach Rebo, what was it about the, the 01 to 05 era with Colonel football? I feel like we, we obviously have touched on 40-plus years of Colonel football, but the guys who are around the most, it, it's that four- or five-year window of, of Nichols football. Well, it was, it was some good times, you know, with, uh, when Jay Thomas was here and then Darryl Day and they, they did a good job in, in getting some of the local players and, and who was when they were done playing, staying around here. And, that, and that's a big key. And that's what yeah. we're trying to get back to by, by getting these guys. When we get the Quindus Dobbs and the Aaron McKinney's from, from Vashry and to have these guys staying around and staying home, uh, and after they're done playing, they'll come back and support just like Shane does. Well, we have four guys, you know, playing in a game Thursday from St. James High School, mm-hmm. my alma mater. On McNeese State side, we have John T. Jones, a defensive tackle. Aquinda Stive was a linebacker yeah. at Nichols. You've got Aaron McKinney, a wide receiver, and also um, Costley. Yep, so, um, yes, yeah, right. so we just four guys from the same school. You know, anytime you can tap into the local talent, and uh, you know, it used to be you you read about guys that were getting recruited, and you see, you know, well this guy's got McNeese and Northwestern, and and this now it's this guy's choosing Nichols over McNeese mm-hmm. and Northwestern and and UL Monroe, and and so that's. That's the deal, I think, that Coach Rebo is creating. He's creating a uh, passion for the game that you really didn't see prior to his arrival here. You know, I sat in those stands. A buddy of mine, Brian Powell, we had season tickets six, seven years running. And, uh, you know, we sat in those stands, and, and you just didn't see the passion. You know, uh, program was getting beat down in the game, and guys just didn't have the passion to come back and fight. And we'd have conversations about, you know, hey, man, I don't know if we'd ever been down by this score, but yeah. I know we'd still be fighting. You yeah, know, and that's, that's the first – First thing I saw his first year was that fight, you know, and it kind of reminded me of my freshman year. We went three and seven, but we fought, and we were in probably four or five games that would that could have went the other way. And then the next year, we went from three and seven. You know, we went ahead and we won uh, six, seven games. It wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't take a whole lot of time to get to that conference championship level. And I think that's where we are right now. There's a lot of talent on the team, and, and there's a lot of passion to go around. And I think that's what happened the first year too, with winning three games. And and that was the big thing. Don't give up the big plays and, and just be in some games. And people could could understand that and respect that and see the product you're putting on the field. Uh, and you didn't have to win all those games, you know. And they they knew what you were working towards. And all of a sudden, once it started clicking, then you can have those winning seasons. And there's the type of guys that you have around too, because we had a bunch of guys that would come in from uh, winning programs, and you know we were used to winning. So I mean, losing was unacceptable. Remember the first game we won was uh, Sanford from uh, Sanford, Alabama. I mean, the guys were like partying in the locker room. The older guys. And the younger guys looking around like, man, I mean, this is weird stuff, man. That's, I mean, you know, could have sworn we won a Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, at the end of that year, the last game my freshman year, my most the, the game that I remember the most was uh, Arkansas State because they were a Division One A school. And, you know, we went up to Arkansas State last game of the season, and we went there to win. And a bunch of young guys were starting by the end of the year. It was my first game starting at defensive end. And we went in there, and we kicked their butt. It was 28-22, and their coach actually got fired, you know, midway through the game. During the game, during the game, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, but we, we have a little bit of the same thing. And, and uh, you know, coming off of 0-12 season uh, a couple of years ago, and we won three games, and some of the older guys, you know, were like, hey, we finally won and got it off. But some of the young guys were like, what, what are you talking about? I mean, this is nothing. We, we need to be the other way around, 8-3. And that's when you know you're changing the program. We're hanging out with Coach Rebo and, and Shane Kleber, part of the Colonel football program from 2001 to 2004. When you mention four of the, the St. James players that are a part of this this Colonel football team, can't help but notice that a lot of those guys, different years, they didn't all arrive at once. Mm-hmm. This notion that you can have player packages out of high school that sign with a program, not as much the case as there is a player pipeline, that if you're part of a school and you look at a class ahead of you and those players commit to a program and they're coming back and saying, no, this was a great decision. I'm so glad I went to Nichols. Maybe you should think about this in the future. That's real. Yeah, it's, it's a real deal. And, uh, you know, when you walk around high school and uh, you for a while, you know, the Nichols and 
Oh, it, it wasn't part of the question. And then all, all of a sudden now with the publicity that you have, Nichols is out there, you know, social media plays a bigger role because social media now can act as a, it's, it's almost like a free marketing that you have. So the more the kids get to know the name and they see you playing on TV against Georgia, I mean, you're, you're reaching kids in Georgia that you would never reach yeah. by playing, you know, 26-24 against an SEC school. Say, hey, Nichols is the real deal. My father-in-law was sitting at a, uh, a, a bed and breakfast a couple of weeks ago in Alabama, and he said he was sitting and he was eating dinner. He told Coach Rebo this after church a few weeks ago. He said he was sitting down and, you know, they had a couple sitting in front of him, and they said, man, you know, it's Nichols State. You ever heard of Nichols State before? And he said he turned around, he's got a Nickel State shirt on. And he, he gave him a little lesson, a history lesson on Nickel State. You know, so the, the word is spreading, and I think it does help the success that you have on the field. Obviously, it gets people in. Uh, but when you do, you recruit local, and then you have a pipeline going to a school, and the kids hear from the guys that are there that it's being right. done the right way, and that they're building a championship team. You know that that kind of that's that that goes a long way. You know that's uh that's not something that you can purchase. You know with recruiting funds or anything like that. That's that stuff goes. That's that's a big deal. Well, I think we nailed it for our first Colonel Legacy moment of the year, Coach Rebo, first to many. But Shane, just to, to have you drop a little wisdom, it's been great, and especially considering how close you are with this program and still up to date with everything Nichols football related. Uh, one more thing before we go. Last year we went up to Lake Charles, and uh, my wife and I spent uh, the night at a bed and breakfast, and. She wanted me to talk about the uh, clap clap that Magnese State has. We don't want to see the clap clap on a Thursday night, Coach. If you don't know what the clap clap is, Magnese has the largest mass celebration after a score. The entire fan base will stand up. They'll turn to the right. They'll give you two golf claps. They'll turn to the left. They'll give you two golf claps, and it annoyed the daylights out of us. If she's got to see that clap clap on Thursday, she said she's not going to be happy. So we don't want to see the clap clap. Uh, another thing to add to the game plan, Coach Rebo. Take note of it. No Shane Cleveland. That's in my speech tomorrow. Thanks, Shane, Shane. Shane Cleveland, we appreciate having you. We're off and rolling. Coach Rebo show will wrap up with Matt Roan. He's our athletic director at Nickel State University, and he's up next on the Tim Rebo show brought to you by the Sports Medicine Center of Tibetal Regional. Napa, no.